So guys, welcome. Th I, I need to start by first saying thank you. Thank you so much for all of you have, who have been supporting me in my journey throughout this entire you know, journey that I've, been, that, that I've been running with this uh, awesome group of people. I need to say thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for supporting me and my social media and everything that I've been putting out there. I just appreciate the love and I am happy today to finally be able to present a deal that I am proud of, a deal that you know, I feel confident about and that by the end of this presentation, whether or not you invest with us, I am confident that you are going to feel strongly that this is a good deal as well. So let's jump right into it. First of all, I want to introduce Gwaith, my man and my partner. Hey guys, how you doing? Sorry, it takes me a second to unmute myself. There's always kids screaming in my background as well, but uh, totally excited to be here and grateful for Nico and I'm um, grateful that um, we're doing this together. Awesome, man. All right, so let's jump into a Columbus portfolio. I want to clarify a couple things before we jump in. This is a two property portfolio. So there are two properties here. It's been a little bit confusing for some people to understand that, but there, there are 194 units, guys, and it's consisting of two properties. So let's jump in. So here's the disclaimer that I am not going to read to you. If you guys want to read it, I'm going to send you all the you know, the tape, the recording of this, and you guys can read through this at your own leisure and get bored, but please do read it. Here's the table of contents, guys. We're going to be talking about the executive summary. We're going to discuss our team, the portfolio and track record. We're going to talk about the market overview, the property overview, our business plan. Gwaith is really going to tackle the financial analysis, and then I'm going to share with you guys how you can reach out to me and invest when we're finished with this. All right, so here's the executive summary, guys. Really exciting stuff. We, we bought this property at a 7.26 cap rate. You know, we're offering a 70-30 LPGP split, so 70% of the profits are going to be going to you guys if you choose to invest as a limited partner, and 30% of the profits are going to be going to us, the management team. We bought this property for $7.85 million and we are projecting a construction budget of 1.8 million. Hold time, we are projecting for five years on this project and equity required is 3.1 million for this deal. And I'm gonna stop for a second to let you guys know that we have already funded 2.5 million of that, meaning there is only 600,000 remaining. So if after this presentation, you guys feel strongly about this, uh, property, please, time is of the essence, reach out to me and we can get you in quick because there are limited spaces. Uh, we're going to be projecting a, a 2.15 equity multiple on this deal, which I am really proud of, really excited about also, and an in, in, in average annual return of 23%. The IRR on this project is projected at 22.3% and an average cash on cash at 7.74%. All right, guys, so Gwaith, can you expand a little bit about on those investor returns on the bottom there? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, one thing I will say is that this being a portfolio, like Nico said, it's, it's a little bit challenging to average the returns um, from both, both properties into one, um, you know, one average return estimate. So we do have underwriting on the individual properties and, and we try to then kind of blend that into, you know, into one overall return because the way this investment works is that the returns of both properties are going to be what your return is um, as a whole. So w with that said, you know, we're just using an, um, an a not, well, not an average, but just as an example, say a $100,000 investment. So, you know, year one with this being a very, um, you know, a high value add and a, and a heavy lift, you know, the cash on cash is not very high, you know, 2.02. Um, it grows thereafter, um, you know, 8.5, 9.738.88. The reason it drops off in year four is because um, that's when the interest only will, um, you know, wear off on the loan that we have on the property. Not that we have, but we have projected on the property. We currently own the property. Um, one of our um, partners actually provided a majority of the private loan for it. So, part of the business plan is to refinance into agency debt. And that's where you see, or that's why you see, you know, in year four it drops off a little bit because we have three years of interest only on that. Um, and then in year five, you know, we're back up to nine, five, five. So 
you know, at the end of the day, the, the average annual return is 23%. So that includes the cash flows throughout as well as the sales proceeds. Um, and again, so that's just an average of both properties throughout the whole period. Awesome. Hey guys, if you have any questions or need any clarification, don't feel weird. Don't feel awkward. We're here to help. Uh, just hold them until the end of the, the presentation and we will answer your questions. And if those questions are still not answered, uh, just reach out to me and I'll make sure I answer those questions for you. Some more investment highlights, guys. So Columbus is a really desirable market. It's a growth market. So it's got a strong, diverse economy, growth rate and population growth. It's Ohio's second largest metropolitan area and the second most populous city in the Midwest. There is a multi-level income upside on this property. So currently the markets, the, uh, the rents are way below market. And this is what actually we seek out and what we love to see. If a property has got such low rents, we are, it's so much easier to go in there and just raise the rents, not to kick people out, not to be a, a vicious landlord, just to raise the rents up to the market value and what people should be paying. And it's funny, you know, there we have a couple of our partners have already visited the property a variety of times and have been thanked for what we're doing at the property. People are saying, thank you for raising the rents to market rent so that we can kind of scoot out, you know, the riffraff and, and weed out the, the bad seeds and create a nice community for people. So when we see below market rents, this is just something that I really like to capitalize on. Uh, we also, something I'm, I'm also really excited about is we can implement RUBS, which is a ratio utility billing system. If you're not familiar with what, with what that is, it's basically you bill back a certain percentage of the utility bills to the tenants and that thereby increases the income of the property, thereby raising the value of the property. It's just something that you look for in every single property. And guys, honestly, I have never found it until now. So I'm really excited to be able to implement RUBS. We're also offering desirable amenities for the uh, tenants that are really gonna enjoy the, the neighborhood and the community that, that we're trying to put together. We bought this thing, instant equity guys, we bought this thing at substantially below market value and Gwaith is really gonna share that later with you, but we got it for like half price and it's just, it's just something that I'm again, really proud of, really excited about and just kind of curious about how it happened. So Gwaith is gonna expand on that later. Uh, economies of scale. As you know, guys, we go shopping at Costco for a reason. The more you buy, the cheaper things get. So the more units under management, the more we can reduce our expenses per door, guys. So some examples are like maintenance, repairs, cost of rehab, management, everything, all the prices go down. And we have actually purchased, instead of purchasing, going to Home Depot, let's say, and purchasing flooring every week, we buy giant containers of flooring, drop them on the property, and get the work done quickly. Uh, we have also partnered up with a professional management team. Gwaith, you want to talk about our management team? I'm excited about that too. Sure. So um, our management team is an existing relationship. They manage um, property for, uh, for me and my team in Southern Indiana. They also manage for uh, the other partners on this team in their Atlanta deal. So, you know, between us, it's, it's close to an additional 500 units that they, that they manage uh, for us. Um, they're, they're also going to be investing into this deal as limited partners as well, same as you. So that wasn't anything that I, I really even approached them with, but something that they asked to come in and asked if there was space to invest. So I, I think that goes a long way to show how they see the deal, um, what they think the value is. And, and I'm, if you don't know already, you know, we, we actually closed on this deal. So we're going through our business plan at this point. So I think what they're seeing in terms of our execution on that and what we've been able to achieve in a short period of time, I think that also went a long way in, into having them invest in the deal with their own money. Yeah, it comes down to trust. And, and it's really nice to see that the team that we hired is so interested in the deal as well that, like you said, they're investing with us as an equity partner on the limited, limited partnership side, which I think, you, like you're saying, goes a long way, Goyth. All right, let's continue. So here is our dynamic team, guys. I'm really excited about this team. So we had all met back in the spring of 2020 when I was solely focused on Tampa, and we placed a few offers. We, we submitted offers on a variety of deals down in Tampa, some really big deals, and none of them panned out. Uh, so I'm just really excited to be able to join them now on this Columbus deal. 
I'm going to share a little bit about our roles and what we do. So Abiel and Renee, the guys there on the left, these guys are studs. What they uh, specialize in, their bread and butter, is purchasing C-class properties with a ton of deferred maintenance, going in there, rehabbing them, fixing them up quick, and selling them. Now, these guys have their own in-house construction team that, they, that they're based out of Miami. But guess where they are right now? They literally drove up from Miami and are living in the vacant units while they are rehabbing and renovating them. And guys, they're moving fast. It's like incredible, way beyond what we had projected. Just moving quick, turning these units fast at a really good rate. And I'm just really excited to be working with these two guys because they know exactly what they're doing. Besides that, they are excellent at negotiating. They're excellent at deal, deal sourcing. And these, they're just good guys. So looking at investor relations, me and Annette are going to be handling that, marketing and, and investor relations. So if you choose to invest with us, I will be your point of contact. If you have any questions, you can refer them to me. If you want to know anything about the deal or any updates, I'm going to be sending those to you. So any questions that you have, like I said, refer them to me. Then the four beautiful guys on the bottom, we got Gwaith, Mike, Duran, and Chris. So these, are good. these guys are going to tackle the asset management, and they've been doing this before on a variety of projects together. That's why I trust what they do. They work uh, side by side with the property management team that they have on another one of their properties. And they're going to be overseeing the day-to-day -day operations. So like I had a conversation with Chris the other day, and he's telling me all this updated information that he got from Tony and all these guys that are working on the property for us. So it's just really nice to know that we have a solid team uh, working behind us, and I am proud and ready to rock. Track record, guys. So as a team, we currently own $40 million in real estate. Over 3,000 units acquired, stabilized, and sold to date. Currently over 1,800 1, units under management and another, we are equity partners in another 3,380 units. Real solid team. We're going to jump into the market now. So when we begin looking at a market, we first look at the market itself, meaning the MSA or the city. We look at it from a broad perspective and we look for a certain, you know, metrics and certain, I guess, dynamics that, that different markets have. Columbus is a really cool, really interesting market. And here's what, here's what I think about it. I think that they are planning for the future in the, in the right ways. What they do is they make a business friendly environment where corporations and other businesses like to uh, come in and, and do business. It's they're creating an environment where people want to move to and they're creating a very competitive environment as far as technology is concerned. Guys, Ohio is, is home to four Fortune 500 companies and 15 Fortune 1000 companies. That really says a lot, okay? Overall, it has been ranked as one of the top 10 best big cities in the country. It's the number seven best place in the country to operate a business and the number four most business friendly in the country. Guys, Columbus also has a triple a triple A credit rating from all rating agencies. Guys, what are we talking about? We're missing the big one here. Ohio State University. What? Go Buckeyes. What do you get when you get like a giant university with camaraderie and just a, a whole team spirit and, and the whole sense of, of pride and ownership in where you live? I mean, this is just, it goes a really long way. And on top of that, 100,000 young professionals are graduating from these universities, from this university and other nearby universities that create just a dynamic and a diverse workforce. That is something that also you want to see when you're moving into a market. Uh, we're going to take another broad look at the market before we go a little deeper. So here, guys, Columbus is a, is a dynamic 11 metropolitan region with, with amidst the most unprecedented economic growth in recent history. So we look for growth, right? Different types of growth. We look for technology. We look for their government policies. And we look at what type of people live in these areas. So as far as growth, guys, 20% job growth and 10% population growth in the last nine years or from 2010 to 2019. That is huge, okay? On top of that, guys, 500,000 new housing units are needed by 2050 and they are not even coming close to producing that amount. So what does this tell us? This tells us that people are going to need a place to live. Our units should not stay vacant, guys. This is what this is what we look for. We look for areas of high growth, high population, and high job growth. 
Uh, when we look at technology, what we like to see is a very competitive environment that can keep pace with the rest of the nation or out uh, or beat it, right? And this, this, uh, you know, when when you have good technology, it attracts the right people to the city as well, which we want to see. So they're saying that it's ranked the top U.S. market for business startups, and actually. One really fun fact that I've recently learned about Columbus is that it's a test market. So for small businesses and new products, what they do is they start and they test their products or businesses in Columbus because the population is representative of that of the nation, which is really cool. So, you know, uh, you're going to get a whole bunch of startups and a whole bunch of different types of businesses in this community. So I think this is very important to keep in mind. When we talk about government, like I was saying, we talk about you know, what kind of policies are they, you know, bringing forth? What are they looking, how are they supporting their communities, their businesses? How are they supporting jobs and how are they looking towards the future? You know, so they, so Columbus is set up really for venture capitalism, guys. They have just about $2 billion invested in, in venture capitalism between 2018 and 2019. That's huge, guys. And it's been ranked as the number one mid, Midwest city for attracting capital. So the government is doing the right thing to help this economy grow, even amidst, you know, the chaos that we're seeing with this COVID, because what we have here in this area is a very diverse uh, job sector. Okay. So there's, there's, you know, they're not solely relying on things like tourism. And, you know, if, if you're going into a market, you have to make sure that it is, di is a, it is a diverse job market. Okay. When we talk about people, uh, we, what we look for is another, again, we look for diversity. Okay. And this is a very diverse market and guys, the cost of living here is 3%, three and a half percent below the national average. It's ranked as one of America's best places to live guys in the top 45, most educated cities. This is where Columbus is. And, and what, what's special about educated people, besides the fact that you get nice, uh, a good sense of community with those type of people. One white collar job can produce five blue collar jobs. And it's really important to keep that in mind too. All right. So guys, here's a shameless plug. We got our friend, our man, Brian Mullen on the call here tonight. And he created this awesome software. It's called Market Nomad. And we use this, if you don't know what Market Nomad is, it's something that we use to identify and distinguish between good and bad markets. And he's, he gives it a really simple layout for you guys to see. And now what I did is I, I, instead of looking at Columbus, the MSA, what we're now looking at is Columbus, Franklin County. So we're getting a little bit closer to where the properties are. These are both the properties are located within this county. And as you can see, population growth, huge, 23%, A plus. Household income growth, huge, 51%, 75% for gains in household value. Now, if we're looking at that chart down at the bottom, that is a good thing that it is declining, guys. I don't want you to think it's a bad thing. We want to see vacancy going down, right? The less, the lower the vacancy, that means the higher the occupancy. So that's a really good sign. All right, we're going to jump into the properties. Gwaith, do you want to take us into these properties here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, we can do that. Um, so as mentioned before, you know, the, these are two properties in the portfolio. Um, a little bit of history on the purchase. We, um, you know, we, we got this through a relationship with, um, with Renee, you know, for, for the most part, he had somebody that worked under him for a while that moved to Columbus, became a wholesaler, got the property under contract. And we, we ultimately bought it through that wholesale contract during that process. Um, when we went through our due diligence and, and everything, you know, we, we realized that we needed to reduce the price and, Turns out there were, it ended up being a longer process and the the wholesaler in essence got out of the deal But we still needed to make sure that she was made whole we be, we became in direct contact with the sellers themselves and The sellers were really selling because of a dissolution of a partnership So they had owned this place for a very long time together. It was over 12 years if I remember correctly and basically the partnership was was just falling apart and they needed to sell it because of that. Um, they got a little bit fed up with the wholesaler at the time. So the deal was falling apart, but we were able to get in there, get in direct contact with the sellers, bring it all back together and purchase the properties. So the two properties that we got were Sharon Woods um, and Forest Creek. 
Uh, Sharon Woods is a 48 unit property and Forest Creek is the 146 unit property. In, at the time when we were going through our research, um, a, a simple Google search that, that probably still exists, so you could probably still do it, is if you Google these properties and, and even, you know, I think it was on LoopNet from 12 years ago that they were listed and the rents that they were charging then were the rents that they're charging now. So there has been pretty much zero rent growth and, and it goes to show just, you know, when coupled with the previous slide that Nico was showing with the, uh, with the enormous growth that's gone through Columbus, you know, these, these properties, they, they weren't experiencing that growth and they weren't being pushed um, to where they could be. So it, it goes to where we got it at and, and the price that we got it at and what we think we can do with it. And we're already starting to achieve that. So, um, you know, the, these are both exteriors of both of the properties. Forest Creek is on the right and Sharon Woods was on the left. <laughs> You're good, Nico. <laughs> you, you can see we're winging it a little bit here tonight. But, um, you know, Sharon, Sharon Woods is on the north, um, you know, the northeast corridor there. Um, the one thing I love here is if you look at that aerial view, and I may be skipping ahead by saying this, you know, there's a lot of green space. So one of the things that we didn't underwrite for, it's not in our business plan. We're not even on the business plan slide yet. So Nico, I apologize for, for jumping there, but no problem. you'll, you'll, you'll see that there's a lot of space. And, and one thing that we want to do, and we've actually already started to do is to see if we can get some entitlements or we can get some zoning um, to at least have the ability to add another building or two and, and to increase um, you know, what, what would be those 48 units to maybe add, say for instance, 16 more. And we're not looking necessarily to do it, but we're looking to have those plans in place so that when we sell it, we're just going to have that much of a, um, you know, as, as a bump on, on the sale. But, you know, th this property has really big units, which in this day and age is a, is a good thing, you know, with people working remotely, working from home, they, they need more space. And, you know, some of these units are over 1,200, you know, 1,400 square feet. So there's not many competitors, you know, in the area that have unit sizes that we have. Um, you know, one, you know, downside to that in theory is that your turn costs are going to be a little bit higher. Your, your renovation costs are going to be a little bit higher. That's where um, on the renovation side, you know, ABL and Renee come in because they're like, like uh, Nico said, their crews are up there and they're running through these units and we're doing it job by job, not unit by unit. And we're, you know, we have about 45 units rent ready, very close to being rent ready and ready to lease up. Um, and they're doing it at an amazing cost for us. So, um, you know, business plan, I know it's written here, but I know we got some slides upcoming. That's going to, that's going to go over that in a little bit. So maybe we can kind of, you know, shoot over to the next side. Uh, slide. Yeah, Go ahead, Nika. I just want something? to point point out that this is what we walked into at these properties. So this is, uh, uh, you know, dated, obviously. And and to Gwaith's point, you know, these guys had owned it for twelve years. And w when you when you look at a property that's been owned for twelve years, you wouldn't necessarily think that there should be a lot of deferred maintenance, but there was. And it just goes to show that, like he was saying, the partnership was dissolving. They stopped paying attention to the property. And even shadier things were going on with the management showing that they stopped paying attention to the property. They couldn't hold it anymore. And what we did when we came in and purchased the property cash was really provided them a service and a value that they weren't going to be able to get. This property was going downhill because they just couldn't care for it anymore. Yep, absolutely. Um, so this is the other property, uh, Forest Creek. This is the 146. There's, there's a bunch of town home units, you know, very desi desirable. It backs up to, you know, school and some open space. You know, one thing you'll see on that aerial shot is that there was a big pool that originally we thought we were going to, to renovate. Um, turns out it was, it was too far gone. It was too big of a pool. It would have required a lifeguard. So, we were able to pivot on that part of the business plan. Um, it's since been filled in, seated over. There's going to be a dog park, an outdoor fitness area, um, and a picnic area in its place. Um, the creek that you can sort of see going through the property, it was garbage filled. It, it was an eyesore of the property. That was one of the biggest things that we said when we were going to come and we were going to clean up that creek. We we're going to do landscaping around that creek. We we're actually going to spend a lot of money on it um, to make it a an amenity. 
um, of sorts. And we've got some videos that we can share with you guys if you'd like, but, but we're about halfway done with that. And, and it looks amazing. So when Nico was talking earlier about, you know, some thank yous that we've gotten along the way at, at some site visits, you know, that's one of the things we've been thanked for. So um, exciting stuff is happening over there. Similar story with the units, um, dated, under rented, um, going through, you know, we're going through that right now. Um, this property, we, when we took it over, it was 80% occupied. So not a stabilized property. Uh, we know and expect that we're going to take it below that level. Um, and then we're going to apply for our refi on the rebound. So once we hit 85% on the rebound, we're going to put our application in with the refinance. We've already got the, our lender on board is a lender that both groups have used. Um, a little side note from that, the way that our groups came together was through the lender. Um, he introduced us. He thought that we brought value to each other. Um, and he was right. So we all started looking at deals together six, eight months ago, uh, maybe more. And this is one that we, you know, we took over together and, you know, the lender, even though he's not in the deal right now with his lending, because we bought this in cash with, um, you know, within the business, you know, within the business itself, he's going to be doing the refi. So he's had his eyes on it. He sized it up and, you know, and he's ready to, to accept the application when we, when we know that it's going to be the ideal time to do it. Um, you know, implementing rubs and is, is another one of those value adds here that we're, you know, we have on the, on the docket. Um, we actually have a call tomorrow with the property management company to really dial in on that. Um, and yeah, so what are we looking for? Next slide there, Nico? Yeah, before we head, I just want to point out that a lot of the majority of these, 55% of these are townhomes, guys. And what I like about that is that you're getting families in those. So you're not going to get, you know, a single person that's coming in and, and, and going to leave soon. So when you have families moving in, you have tenants that stay. And, and that's what we like to see. We want to create a nice community and a nice environment. Uh, one of our partners, Duran, was there. And he was telling us when they were cleaning out the creek, you can now actually hear water running and it sounds really peaceful like a river. So everybody's just really excited about this property. Um, so here are the old, this was the old units at Forest Creek. And now here is what Abiel and Renee do best, guys. So when they go into properties with deferred maintenance, they turn these things and make them look beautiful. So if you're looking at the left, those are the before pictures of the picture of the kitchen. And now looking at the right, redesigned the kitchen, the layout's bigger, they added dishwashers, new modern kitchen with a breakfast bar and undermount sink. When we're looking at the bathrooms, they had dated and leaking bathrooms. And this is typical of a property with a lot of deferred maintenance, just like what we walked into. Outdated fixtures and poor lighting, old toilets. So the bathtub and the wall tiles resurfaced, new bathroom vanity, toilet and fixtures, new waterproof flooring, luxury vinyl flooring in the entire apartment. Pretty pictures. So like, would you want to live in that apartment on the left? No. Would you want to live on the apartment on the right? Yes. And here's the thing. We're not raising rents substantially to the, to the point where people can't afford them. We know the clientele, we know the demographic and we know what, what they can't afford. And, you know, we're creating an environment for them that they're going to be comfortable in and that they're going to take a, a sense of pride and ownership in when they move in. So this is, you know, something that excites me as well. We're going to create real homes for people. All right, Quaith, here we are with the business plan, my man. All right. So yeah, we, we kind of touched on this a little bit already. Um, but, you know, exterior renovations, um, when we went through our due diligence period, we had highlighted some things that we knew we had to um, address. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest ones was landscaping and, and that's been, that's been, you know, happening as we speak and, and previously. So a lot of tree trimming, a lot of tree removal. Um, you know, there was some, some fencing that was, you know, needed to be replaced. Um, so that was, that was, that was done. We're about 50% done on the fencing. Uh, we're hundred percent done on the exterior lighting. So, you know, if, if you follow any of what we have going on social media, you would have seen, you know, some of the new lighting that was put into place. You know, we redid the door, the exterior doors. Um, power washing has been completed. 
we're in the process of rebranding. So we're referring to these properties as Forest Creek and Sharon Woods. That's what we bought them at. Um, we've rebranded, or I should say in the process of rebranding Forest Creek to New Bridge Apartments. Um, reason we chose that name is that there is one bridge um, at the apartment that goes over the creek. So we wanted to highlight that. And Duran is, uh, is an architect and a designer. So he's been working on the logo and we have um, contracted out with the signage company and we have all that being implemented as we speak. Uh, we just recently started the, the rebranding of Sharon Woods. So Sharon Woods is, is now going to be Woodside Apartments. Um, we just approved the logo on that, but, but that one's going to be probably a month or two behind Forest Creek in terms of the rebranding efforts. Uh, common areas, you know, we've done the new floors in the hallways, um, you know, new staircase and entryways that are going in. Leasing office was something that we put a lot of effort into and we're really proud with how it's come out. So that, that's, that's pretty much 95% complete. The only thing we're waiting on is, um, is a couch. Um, and if you guys have followed anything, you know, there's been a, it's been tough getting some appliances <laughs> and building materials and such and couches was on that list. So so the couch is the only thing we're really waiting on for the renovation of the leasing office. It was built out from scratch. Uh, Jerron, the architect, uh, he designed that. And, you know, Abiel and Renee's crew, they, you know, they built it out. Um, in terms of the amenities, where the pool was, we're adding the bark park, um, a dog park, if, uh, if you guys have little furry friends, um, an outdoor fitness area, and also a picnic area. So... Um, you know, we got those things going and the, the playground, there's going to be a playground as well in the works, but we're just not as far along with, with that. Um, interior units, we're probably this week, you know, the last thing we were waiting on were some countertops. So we're going to have about 45 units rent ready coming up this week. And we're, we're going to start with the, uh, with the lease up of those 45 units. So when we came in, we came into a fairly high, you know, highly vacant property at Forest Creek, it was about 20%. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And when we came in, you know, we, there were a lot of month to month leases. So we, we had raised the rent expecting some people to leave and we're trying to, you know, um, you know, to turn the demographic that we have there, uh, make it a little bit more family friendly. Um, in doing so, we knew the occupancy was going to dip. So it has dipped. Um, you know, we're, we're closer to 70% now but we have these units coming online and we're leasing them up at, at rates that we're, we're pretty excited about. Um, same thing with Sharon Woods. Sharon Woods wasn't, you know, I think we took that over. We were about 92% occupied, but, but kind of a similar situation. We knew we were going to take a dip in the occupancy with the business plan um, and renovating the units as we wanted to, but, you know, both are kind of going, you know, to plan. Uh, we're actually going, we're a little bit better than where we thought we would be in terms of a timeline. And I think we're doing a little bit better with where we thought we would be in terms of rents. So exciting stuff there on the interiors. Um, you know, for the NOI, again, like, you know, rubs is a big one. We're able to actually do this, you know, a little more professionally than what was attempted in the past. And what was attempted in the past um, it, it was tough to even just decipher how they were doing it. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to make that a more standardized process. Um, it, it's done directly through the, the management company and their software at Polio. So, you know, we're not going to get into any trouble how we're doing it. We're doing legitimately, we're doing it legally and, and it makes logical sense. You know, resident retention programs is something that we're pretty big on. We, we want to make sure that we, you know, we have community and we have people that are proud to live there and we want to be proud owners as well. So, you know, we're, we're not those, those people that come in and we're just trying to push, you know, push rents at the, at the expense of, of the residents. You know, we realize that this is a team and we're a team and they're a team and, and we really want to provide just a, you know, an, a nice place where people are proud to live there. Um, Another way that we've, um, you know, tried to optimize this NOI on the revenue side is with cable contracts. So uh, Mike, if he's still on the call, has been, you know, heading up that effort and with, um, with reaching out to, you know, to companies to basically provide us with cable contracts. Um, it gives them kind of, you know, first rights at the property, but it adds a nice, you know, one-time fee for us. When I say fee, it's a one-time payment to us, but then we have revenue share. So the more people that we can get to sign up with the cable company, the more we'll share in the revenue. 
and again, that's something that we didn't underwrite for. So that's all kind of, you know, you know, added bonus that we, that we hope will sort of be cherry on top. And same thing with, um, you know, u- utility rates. So we're, we're going to try to negotiate with utility companies and with third parties to see what we can do in terms of getting our best utility rates and, and seeing how that can help us on the revenue side of things. Awesome. I al- I'd also like to point out that the conversations that we have as a team and as a group, always putting our heads together, always trying to think of ways to enhance the, the functionality of the buildings, enhance our team, enhance the management. It's like, you know, we take pride in this project also. And I need to share with people that, you know, these projects don't come along very often. For example, I've been looking for literally one year and finally I am able and confident enough to present a deal that I feel comfortable presenting to you guys. So let's just keep that in mind too. All right, Gwethi, let's talk a little bit about the financial analysis. All right, financial analysis on, on this slide. Um, you know, we, we actually purchased this for, I know it says 40K a door there. It ends up at about 43K a door, but that's all inclusive of, you know, broker fee, wholesaler fee, acquisition fee, the whole nine yards. So that's actually a really, really solid um, price. You know, the, the graphic that you see to the left of there is from a CoStar report, if I'm not mistaken, and, and the average uh, sales price per unit is closer to 72 a door. I'm, I'm going to break my own rule here because I, I suggested to Nico not, not to share this information, and, and here I am going to share it right now. Um, we actually got an unsolicited offer um, to sell already. So we've actually only owned it for a couple months now. We closed August 5th on it. Um, and that structure as to how we're you know, refinancing and you know, bringing investors in as a syndication, it's, it's a little bit different, but you know, those who are in, they're in. Um, we got this unsolicited offer last week and it's not anything that we're looking to, to do at this point, but the seller, he asked us to counter and, and we did counter. We threw it out there. We threw it out there at a number that's, you know, we're fiduciaries for the investors that are in here with us. So if he's willing to purchase at that price, it would be a nice return, but, I'm not holding my breath. It, it's kind of, we threw it out there as a, um, as a unicorn and, and we'll see, you know, if anything happens, but again, it's not anything I expect to happen, but it just sort of validates what I think is a great purchase price that we acquired this property at and what other people see the value to be and what we're doing in terms of adding value um, just accentuates that. Awesome. So what we're looking at here is our rental projections. So if you look to the left, um, you know, we're at 194 units and it breaks down the unit types by square foot and existing rent. So when I was talking before, I was talking about doing that Google search and, you know, seeing this property on LoopNet from 12 years ago, the rents that you see there under current rents are pretty close to what they were back then. So we did a very conservative unrenovated rent, which we think is what market rent would be if we don't touch the units, put no money into them, and then a renovated rent. So it's, it's a pretty substantial rental premium that we're seeing. It's not something that we come across too often. You know, the average is close to $200, as you can see on the highlighted, um, those highlighted cells to the right. Uh, the original plan was that we were going to to renovate the, you know, the higher premium units first. So, you know, the, the two bedrooms, the two one fives, the two ones and everything to really achieve those first. When we got into the property, we realized that we could have better efficiency doing it job by job as opposed to unit by unit. So, you know, we had those 40 units vacant and instead of going and doing one unit, two unit, three unit, we went and we did all the trash outs. We did all the floors. We did all the paints. You know, we did all the appliances, all the countertops, and and we did it job by job, realizing that instead of trying to get the people that we wanted in there one unit at a time, if we did the turnover on more of a, a larger scale and came to market with you know those forty to forty five units, it would be like ripping the bandaid off um, fast and getting to where we want to be sooner 
realizing that it would be, a, a, you know, there'd be a little more pain, so to speak, because we, we, we wouldn't, you know, we'd have that lower occupancy during that time. So that's a risk that we took, um, you know, during that time, you know, we're bringing investors in probably at the most ideal time because now we're going to be leasing up those units and our, and our performance is going to be, you know, what we, you know, what we had expected it to be, but you're not coming in during that time where, you know, we're letting that occupancy drop, you know, we're seeing those revenues drop with the expenses sort of staying the same and going through our renovation budget. So it's, um, again, I, I think it's, it's something from a, from an investor standpoint that takes a little bit of the risk away um, and, and gives you a pretty, you know, sunny days ahead. So these, these are, again, you know, just, just some of the metrics that we projected out. So the IRR is high uh, because we came in with this at 100% leverage on the, on the acquisition. Um, and when we go through the refis, there, there might be a return of equity, um, not necessarily projecting it out, but there may be one or two. So getting money back quicker is what leads to the higher IRR. The investor equity multiple, it, it pretty much is what it is, you know, um, you know, based on everything that we projected, what you would expect to see at the end of the five year period. Um, you know, average cash on cash, 7.74. It's, you know, it's, it's not bad. But, I, you know, I think where you're seeing your, your huge returns here, more of the equity multiple and more of the IRR, we're paying a 6% preferred return. So what we did is we tried to keep this as simple as possible. The limited partners get the first 6% and it get the profit split of 70-30 happens thereafter with no catch up. So what you'll see from a lot of syndicators is you might see that preferred return, but then the general partners, they'll catch up. Whether they catch up to that full preferred return number or they catch up to say for instance they're 30 percent of the preferred return there's usually that preferred and then there's usually a catch-up we're doing investors get the first six and then we split so the the sponsorship team is, isn't getting anything you know anything before that six percent you get it's it's six percent and then we split we just keep it as simple as possible we we thought it was the best way to do it um, you know, just keep it simple. So, you know, looking at the, you know, at the projections, we went over this on the earlier slide. You can, you know, kind of see that, you know, for yourself as to what the average cash on cash is. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to, I do want to touch on is, is the return of equity, um, how that process works. So we'll use a hundred thousand as an example. If you were to invest a hundred thousand dollars, you're being paid on the cash on cash based on that a hundred thousand dollars. When you get a, in an operational cash flow. So say we, you know, we hit our 6% preferred and, and say 2% after that, you get that 8%. That's not reducing what you invested into the deal. So you're still being paid on that hundred thousand dollars. When we have what's called the capital event. So if we have a refinance or a sale of property, the refinance or sale of property will reduce your capital amount. So if we, you know, for instance, you know, we refi and, and we're able to return half of your investment. So say your investment goes from a hundred thousand and return $50,000. Your preferred return is now based off of that $50,000, but the equity split is still what it is. So even if we return the whole, you know, the whole shebang of it, if you get all of your money back and we still own the property, we're then splitting that, that profit 70, 30. Um, you, but you have no money in the deal. So it's almost like an infinite return. So I just want to be clear as to how that works. Cause I know there's a lot of questions that usually revolve around that. Awesome. Yeah. Great input, man. And I, I agree with you now, if people are still unclear about that, we can certainly have another conversation, uh, after this call or tomorrow or whenever it's good for you guys. Um, now, next steps, if you are as passionate as we are about this deal, contact me. Uh, my number's here, my email's here, but I'm also going to be sending you guys a follow-up email with this recording, and I'll just check in with you to see how you guys are feeling about it. I need to also point out that when you are investing your money in a property, in a syndication, you have to be clear of the risks and that you know everything comes with certain risks so nothing is set in stone however our pro our projections are based off of you know some solid financial underwriting and some solid and very conservative underwriting but that being said you need to be aware of the risks uh, that you're getting into when you are investing with us 
So next steps, if you are passionate like me, like Gwaith, like Mike Constantis, just reach out to me. Uh, send me a text either right after this call or an email right after this call. And like I said, I'm going to be following up with an email. So I want to say thank you guys for joining us. And if you're watching the recording, thank you so much for watching this recording. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out.